Are we ready? Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm going to introduce everybody first. Uh, my name is Stephen Drew, and to my S T E P H E N D R E W, and to my right is Rachel Den Hollander, D E N H O L L A N D E R, and to her right is my partner Adam Sturdivant, S T U R D I V A N T. Um, Along with Mr. John Manley of Manley Stewart, who could not be here, we have filed a complaint this morning in the United States District Court for the Western District of Michigan in federal court. We filed this complaint because we believe that these defendants, Michigan State University, USA Gymnastics, and Twist Arms Gymnastics Club, failed to protect from sexual abuse those who should have been the most important to them. Their young athletes, their young students, and their young females, most of whom were minors, and all of whom were cloaked with the innocence and trust of their youth at that time. We filed in federal court because we believe that the federal laws, Title IX and Section 1983, apply to what wasn't done to protect these young females. The state law violations can also be procedurally handled in federal court as well. Also our clients and some of the defendants are located in many different jurisdictions. Michigan State is a defendant because all of the plaintiffs were seen and allegedly sexually abused by Dr. Nasser when he was an employee of Michigan State. And also Dr. Nasser had access to these young female athletes through the MSU Sports Medicine Department. USA Gymnastics and Twist Stars are defendants for some of the plaintiffs because as young gymnasts, they became members of USAG. Some of the plaintiffs sexual abuse also occurred at USAG sanctioned events at the Twist Stars Club. We as their attorneys, and especially our clients, intend that this litigation also act as a mechanism to achieve institutional change and non-monetary concessions so that acts of sexual abuse like this will never, ever happen again to the young athletes and students. Protecting them is more important than enhancing the reputation of the athletic system that invites their participation. Children are vulnerable because they trust. And once that trust and innocence is stolen, it cannot be easily restored. There, we believe there are others out there that this may have occurred to. There have been more than 60 complaints filed with the Michigan State Police. I would like to say that it is important that if others are out there thinking that they may have claims, that they file complaints with the Michigan State Police and that they consult someone very soon because there may very well be time deadlines that could affect the nature of those claims. I am going to now introduce Rachel Den Hollander who will give a statement and then we believe that we will answer some questions. Thank you. Thank you. This morning I, along with 17 other women, have filed a civil lawsuit against Dr. Larry Nasser, USAG, at Michigan State University for the repeated sexual assaults by Larry Nasser and the deliberate indifference that both MSU and USAG had to these events, allowing his sexual abuse of women and children to continue unabated for decades. I was a patient of Dr. Nasser in 2000, and at age 15 was repeatedly sexually assaulted by him under the guise of medical treatment and medical examination. It was evident during these treatments that these were procedures he used regularly and confidently. As a resident of Michigan and a member of the gymnastics community, I was acutely aware of the level of prominence that Dr. Nasser held in the academic world, the athletic world, and in the medical profession. I was confident that neither USAG nor MSU could be unaware of his methods of treatment and presumed, therefore, that it must be a legitimate medical procedure. 
I further believe that neither organization would trust Dr. Nasser with our country's most elite gymnasts, nor MSU's athletes, nor allow him to train the next generation of medical professionals if there were any doubts regarding the treatments he used. I am grieved to know how misplaced my trust in USAG and MSU was. Unable to reconcile the man that Larry Nasser was held out to me to be with what he was doing, the only conclusion I could reach as a child was that the fear and shame I felt was my own misunderstanding. But I was certain of one thing, that if USAG and MSU had supported Larry Nasser for this long, knowing the way he had contact with other children, my voice would not be heard either. When the Indy Star broke the story on USAG's pattern of burying the allegations of sexual abuse against its member coaches, I saw hope for the first time that the truth about Larry Nasser could be discovered and heard. I filed a criminal complaint with MSU police in August of 2016. I allowed the Indy Star to publish my story, and I have now made the decision to pursue civil charges against both MSU and USAG as well. The decision to pursue civil charges was painful and it was difficult. It is a decision to continue being immersed in these events on a national scale for an extended period of time. But the reality of sexual abuse is this. A pedophile is only as prominent as the people around him allow him to be. I can do everything in my power to ensure that Larry Nasser is prosecuted for his crimes and never has the opportunity to harm another child. But without the ability to speak to the institutional reform so desperately needed, I can do nothing about the next predator who rises to take his place. My desire is not only to protect children from living this nightmare at the hands of Nasser, but also at the hands of any predator. That requires significant institutional reform for both MSU and USAG, and the discussion of what must happen to prevent this from occurring again is something I have a responsibility to take a part in. In the U.S., this reform happens through the civil litigation process. And it is also through this process that other institutions watching these events unfold may become aware of the steps that they too need to take to prevent a predator from flourishing on their watch. I often think of what I tell my own young children as I am guiding them through the process of decision making every day. I tell them daily that there are two motivations for choosing what is right. They can choose what is right out of love because they care for the people around them, and they don't want the people around them to suffer the consequences of their bad decisions. And I tell them they can make a decision out of their own self-interest, because they don't want to make it to suffer the consequences of their bad decisions. But I also tell them that love is the motivator that will help there be peace and joy when doing the right thing is difficult. My greatest hope is that we reach a place where institutions and people in authority do what is right out of love because they care for the people under their authority and under their influence. Because they prioritize the souls and bodies of little children above their own interest. But we are not there yet. And until we reach that place, it is imperative that the civil process mandating these necessary reforms be prioritized. For these reasons, I and so many other women have been, who have been deeply wounded through Larry Nasser's sexual abuse and through both the complacency and complicity of USAG and MSU have filed a civil suit against these organizations. Thank you.